So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is San Francisco uh, Torres. I'm the founder uh, of Hope uh, for Life. And well, we'll let everyone just like. Okay. Hello, hi. Good to you. Oh, yeah. yeah, feel free yeah. to plug our like season to start here. I'm gonna be in the back. You guys can see it. Perfect. I think we're good to go now. So uh good morning or good afternoon by now. My name is San Francisco Torres, uh, founder of uh, Compost for Life. Uh, who here is familiarized with uh, composting? Can you like raise your hand? Okay. Who of you have no idea about composting at all? No one? So, okay. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, well, Compost for Life is a community initiative. Um, we offer compost uh, pickup services for the entire Miami Lake County uh, for residential and commercial. We operate a farm uh, in Cutler Bay. And we basically pick up the organics uh, from different houses, uh, restaurants, uh, hotels, and we turn it into soil. All right. Um, with that, um, we'll get started. And as, as we go through, and if you have any questions, more than happy to answer those questions but to begin with i have a little bit of a game so first you'll see uh, a number and i want you to tell me what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you see that number anyone yes yeah this year so nice and easy yeah? what about um this number here 4.5 uh, billion. It's a big number, huh? Any guesses? How much people have to Okay, yeah, go ahead. Population? What was that? Population? Uh, no, but that's a good guess. Um, this would be how all is Earth estimated to be. All right, so we, when we think about well, 4.5 billion years old. That's a big number. What about this one? 7.9. Yes, population. <laughs> so that's the word population. <clears throat> and the last one, 50 billion. If you have this one right, I'll be extremely impressed. Trash? Huh? Trash? Trash? No. Any other guess guesses? All right. So 50 billion is the number of estimated microorganisms in a handful of compost. So we are dealing with a living ecosystem. When we're dealing with compost, there is so much life in compost that is unbelievable. So basically more than six times uh, the population of uh, Earth nowadays which is unbelievable. So as part of the agenda today, uh, we'll be looking at three different areas, right? Or three different topics. One, why, what is happening? Why are you all here in this room, in in composting? Why my wife, Valentina, sitting on the back and myself I started this movement? What is composting? Answering your questions. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to accomplish? We have a purpose, right? We have a mission and this part of formation. And then we'll talk a little bit about what Compost for Life is doing at this time. Sounds good? So what is happening? Why are you here? I, I, want, I want to hear from you. Why are you here in this session? What would you like to learn? What made you decide? Yes. I like to learn how to compost. How to compost, right? Okay. Anyone else? You're interested, right? Learning about composting and what the process is. So, what is happening now is that when we throw away 
or organics of Port Penelope, they end up typically in a landfill. All right. So when we send them into a landfill, um, a process takes place. We're not sorting out, we're not separating uh, organics from aluminum, from um, plastic, from metals, from chemicals. So everything goes to the same place and it shouldn't be that way. Why is that? Because when it ends in a landfill, this is what happens. We're basically putting it underground. You'll see my, like a huge plastic bag where we're not separating anything. And then there is a bulldozer that basically compresses that because the city provides just a limit on how high that mount or that hill can get. So you've been to El Dorado, right? So you see that hill see yeah. there. There's a limit. So they have to really compress that as much as they can. As we're doing that, yeah, come on in. You want to come in? You can like walk on the back. All right. Anywhere you find a space. So you've been to El Dorado and you see like, you know, how that mountain like is getting higher and higher. But when that happens, we're creating what is called uh, an anaerobic condition. So anaerobic is a lack of oxygen. So we're not letting really organics decompose or compose. It's gonna start generating methane gas and that's very bad for the environment. So methane gas is 21 times worse than carbon dioxide. So it generates one of the biggest problems that we are facing right now in this generation that is climate change. That's why we're doing this summit, right? Like it's one of the things that we can do is actually understand where the problem and the source is coming from. So the other concern is that it generates leachate. So when it rains, all, all that water that is coming through, it can contaminate uh, our groundwater. So it's another problem. <clears throat> so with that in mind, and you start thinking about what, well, like, you know, how can, what can we do and what is happening and what is the impact that we're generating? So if we were to take all the food waste in the world, the entire food waste in the world, and we make it a country, it would be the third highest country with the highest emissions uh, of methane gas after China and the US. So that's a huge impact. And what is unbelievable, that's something that we have created. That's a problem that we have created as, as humans. But now it's our responsibility to solve that problem with our habits, understanding what is happening, what are we causing, what we're not separating organics. You see pictures like this, probably. So methane gas is really elevating the temperature. And when that happens, you know, can anyone tell me here when the temperature rises? The ice start melting. We see seawater racing uh, in levels. And we also have more hurricanes, dry season. So we heard about fires. So there's all kind of problems because more nature is letting us know there is a problem. We're living in an unbalanced state. So with that, I'm not going so far away. Oops. We've seen an I apologize, you know, with these graphic pictures, but it's a reality and we cannot turn away from this reality. It's something that is happening. In uh, September 2020, right here in Biscayne Bay, do you guys remember what happened? Fish yeah, the fish kill, right? Though they were like floating in the water. Why does that happen? Exactly. But well, why there is not enough oxygen in the water? Huh? Yes. So one of the things that happens is that when we overuse or use herbicides, pesticides, all that rainwater that run up end up somewhere, ended up in the Biscayne Bay. When that happens, it generates an algae bloom. Then it's basically killing the seaweed that produces the oxygen for that ecosystem. And then we have a problem. 
were killing our ecosystem. So one of the things to remember is that we pretend that we own an ecosystem. We're just part of an ecosystem and we need to play a role. A role is very important. Each of you, it's your responsibility, your responsibility, my responsibility. It really depends on how we act as individuals and how we generate a change. <clears throat> so now we go to understanding composting, right? Can anyone tell me what composting is about? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, thank you so much. So it's actually the breakdown of organic material. So what we do at our farm is we take your trains, which is our carbon source, and organics, which will be your food scrap. And that's more nitrogen source that we mix up with our carbon source. So in a matter of 120 to 150 days, we can turn this into this, right? So at the farm, what we follow is, uh, is what is called um, aerated static tile process or ASP for short, for short. When we were talking about landfills, what conditions happens in a landfill? It's an anaerobic condition. Here we do the opposite. We want to create an aerobic condition because there is oxygen that is that is like flowing through that pile. So it really helps the right bacteria, the right fungi to strive and really compose those organics. So when you look at that box that it was before, it was completely full. We lose about 50% in volume when we go through an entire process. So it's very powerful. What we see with our, our own eyes, it's a miracle. It's literally Mother Nature at work. In the, it took 4.5 billion years in the making for this to occur. And for us to, not understand and realize that's how modern nature works is a shame on us. So we need to really be in balance with our ecosystem. So why compost? Compost is one of the things that they're working. Um, Bomba is one of the things that we can do for the environment. Okay, we saw how impactful it could be. Through composting, we honor the natural process of modern nature. We also are able to reduce the need for chemical fertilizers and pesticides. So with that compost, we go it's so rich in nutrients. What happens is that veggies, uh, plants can really build up their immune system. Because what happens is that we continue to take those nutrients from the soil. We take it out, we take it out, we eat, we eat, and we send it to an appeal. We're not closing the cycle. We need to take those nutrients back into the soil. Plants, veggies are not different than us. When you eat healthy, when you exercise, when you sleep, you're building up your immune system so you can fight off viruses and illnesses. Same thing goes for plants. But if we don't give the plants the right nutrients, they are immunocompromised. And that's when they need pesticides, they need herbicides. So we create a vicious cycle, all right? Also reduces methane gas. So. Those are some of the benefits of composting, but this one is very powerful. Have you heard about this one before? So composting has a very unique ability to store carbon and prevent it from being released into the atmosphere, which means that A, that carbon is underground and it'll be ready as a nutrient for the plants to grow instead of being out in the atmosphere. 
and <coughs> excuse me, it also acts as a <coughs> as a soil amendment, which when we find soils that have been completely depleted of nutrients because it's so rich in nutrients and so much microactivity. It's like when you're in a, in a biology lab that you're inoculating, it's going to take some time, but you can rescue soils that have been compromised or depleted of, uh, of nutrients. <clears throat> so with that, that's been our, our main inspiration to create uh, what we have today, which is a uh, compost for life. And it's a, a compost community initiative. It's really people like you and me coming together and trying to drive and make a difference. Um, so you see some pictures of uh, the um, uh, friends, classrooms that have like come to a farm. Uh, that's Valentina, my wife, a uh, very good friend from the community. And basically what we're trying to hear to do is just do one simple thing. Instead of putting your organics into a regular trash, you just put it in a compostable container. Is that hard? No. It's no, easy. No. Yes, it's easy, right? Mm -hmm. But we need to have the understanding and the awareness of the impact mm -hmm. that it has on the environment when you put that peel, that banana peel, in a trash container that goes into a landfill, or when it goes to a composting site where you're supporting your community, you're supporting the local farmers, reducing the amount of chemicals that they're using and really protecting the environment. I love the ocean, I love going to a beach, I love going to the mountains, I love seeing animals in the wild. We love all that. I think we can all agree on that, but we need to do our part. We need to play an important role in making this a reality. <clears throat> What have we done? So Compost for Life started uh, in October of uh, 2020. So far, collecting organics, again, from homes, different businesses, restaurants, mainly from the local community. We've been able to divert 124 tons of uh, food scraps, little by little. Little by little, you start making big changes. You start making and driving a positive change. That's equivalent to 43.9 homes being uh, using energy uh, for one year in CO2 emissions, or the equivalence of 446 acres of US forests in one year, sequestering carbon. So just imagine the power that we have by just changing a single habit. And here are some of the items that we receive. Uh, that's the label that, that we use, okay, for containers, but you can compost pasta, rice, coffee grounds, uh, legumes, uh, even like paper towels without oils and greases. We don't put any oils and greases into the compost because it delays the process. You can also put uh, uh, even newspapers, uh, paper, um, bags, um, eggshells, bread. So, so many things that are fully compostable. Anything that I'm missing here or that you might have a question. What about meat? Can, be, can meat be compostable? Actually, it can be compostable. So the thing that we don't accept the meat, the reason is because it brings a lot of uh, pest activity to our farm. All right, so we might find some meat, bones, those are compostables. It's gonna take a while to go through a compost process, but they're compostable. However, we try to keep it as clean as possible. All right, um, what do you think would be an item that we find the most as a contaminant in the farm? Plastic. When you, plastic, uh-huh. What about when you go to a supermarket and you buy, let's say, an avocado. What is on that avocado skin? Stickers. We find stickers everywhere. Even though people try to remove them, but we we'll find them. Or the rubber bands, right? For the asparagus, we find those very often. Those are non-compostable. They shouldn't be there, but 
when we receive them, we have to run it through this. Uh, it's called a sitter or a trauma. It's like a big uh, a screen. And that's basically removing all those contaminants. So we have a clean soil that could be used for, for farming or, or home gardening as well. And here are some of the cards, okay, that we use. So in a way, we we decided to be pink, uh, so people can identify it and separate it from anything else. So when you see a pink card, <clears throat> it does a big card for composting. <clears throat> we also use the um, five gallon buckets and the two point five gallons uh, kitchen caddies uh, for home use. But with this, I just wanted to show you that uh, we have flexibility uh, because ideally I would love for you to compost in your backyard. It's not hard and we can definitely like, you know, help you out with that. But if you live in a small apartment that is a one bedroom apartment and you, you should have the right to compost as well and contribute in a positive way. Uh, so we have these programs available for the school, for restaurants, for hotels. Uh, so little by little, we're being able to really offer these services. One very cool thing that we launched recently is that we really want you to see the impact that you are generating as an individual. So we actually keep track of how many pounds of compost you're diverting from the landfill. So when you go to your online account or by your portal, you're actually, you're able to see how much food uh, scraps or organics you have diverted uh, from landfills and what's your impact. So as real, real life, real time data that we collect. And then um, it also, you also get compost back. So let's say like every six months you get a bag of compost of 50 pounds that you can use for your home garden. Or if you don't need it, we just take it to the farmers in the, in the Redlands, all right? Um, so we want to make this program very tangible and very easy to, for anyone to participate. No matter where you are within the Miami-Dade County, we're starting to reach Broward County as well, but uh, everything started here. We're completely local to Miami, all right? And uh, here we have some of the participants. Uh, we have the schools coming to visit the farm and have volunteers. Yesterday we had five volunteers coming over. Um, it's about building communities and doing the right thing because we're all on this together, okay? You're not only a citizen of the country, you're a citizen of the world where we live in. No matter where you go, if you go to Africa, Asia, South, Africa, South America, it doesn't really matter. You have to be an ambassador for good habits and uh, really protect uh, what we have. Because the, if we continue to live the way that we live and the habits we have now, it's not a sustainable way to live. Landfills have uh, an expiration date. What are we gonna do when we reach maximum capacity in a landfill? Are we gonna wait until that happens or are we gonna start doing something today, right now, understanding what are the consequences? or of our individual actions. So here are some of the farmers that we have brought uh, compost donations. So we have the Blue Horizon Farm, French farms, the botanical gardens, some community gardens, but again, it's really bringing our community together uh, when we're composting and understanding the, the impact that it has. So with this, you know, this is my favorite quote, and it comes from Mahama Gandhi, be the change that you want to see in the world. And it's so true. Why do we have to wait for someone or an entity to provide us a, a service or, or something? Like, why cannot we start driving a change and lead by example, right? It's bringing our community together. Doing this, you're taking a Sunday to be here and understand about composting, right? I'm sure that we could be doing something else, but we're here because we care. We want to drive a change. We don't want to continue 
be doing the same things uh, or the same mistakes. So something to reflect on it. Um, and we can always, you know, look at things uh, and see how we can be better every day, right? Uh, with that, any questions or any comments that I can help out answering? Yes. Sir. I was going to ask about paper when you compost it. I have a lot of like paper from floors and stuff, but I was going to ask, is it okay if it has like pen or marker on it? Or is that uh, good? Yes, we, we take it. However, like there are sometimes inks that might have microplastics that might not be useful for composting. But in our case, we would take the, the paper. All right. Okay. Yes, Does it cost anything? Uh, for the service, yes, because we have uh, like the farm and the driver and the container. So uh, for mo the monthly cost for bi-weekly pickups for the five gallons is $19.99. So it's very inexpensive. And then $29.99 for weekly pickups for um, at least per month, okay, that cost. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do now is that uh, we're going to have a, a price a uh, density discount, which means let's say that you live uh, in Kendall and we get a hundred people composting, the price will drop, okay? Because we wanna make multiple stops in that vicinity, all right? So the more you share with your neighbors, that's gonna like, you know, really make it easier and better for everyone. Yeah. Do you have an account with any of the hospitals or any of the um, schools in your bank? Uh, no, we only have one school now because we're, we've been doing this for about a year and, and we have hotels, but we haven't done any hospitals yet. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? So I've sort of done composting before and then considered it here in Miami, but my biggest hang up has been, I live in an apartment. I mentioned that you before, I live on Fisher Island and I know you've done some work there. Um, is that like having this sort of composting stuff in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. There's ants, there's cockroaches in, yeah. in Miami. Like that's like the kind of hang up you yourself with. What's your thought on that? What's your recommendation on that? Yeah. I think that that for some people is like the, the yeah. issue. Absolutely, that's such a great question. Uh, we get that question very often. So the program that we have, that the five gallon uh, bucket that we provide has a resealable lid, okay? So it's basically, if you keep it sealed, you're not gonna have any others like coming out. One of the things that um, some of our subscribers say is what they do is basically they have that five gallon bucket uh, separated from the apartment or the house, and then they have the kitchen caddy, which is a 2.5 gallon, like a very small container. And then there are daily scraps. They just take it in this compostable bag and put it in there into a five gallon bucket. The big part that's right. Yes, like yeah. And as soon as you keep it, like, you know, completely closed, it's not a problem. Like, we pick up um, on a weekly basis, on the most frequent basis, and we don't have um, any plants. And these get washed, like these containers, get, they get washed and cleaned every week. And you bring a, a clean one. Exactly. So one. we come with a clean and sanitized one, and we take the full one. All right. So that's the way. Uh, the program works. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? What is the name of the service again? What was that? The name of the service? Uh, well, our community uh, is uh, it's called Compost for Life. And you can follow us uh, on Instagram under at Compost for Life. And we have a website that is compostforlifemiami.com. So you can find all the uh, information there. We also accept uh, volunteers. So once per month, we announce uh, volunteer trips. So you come to a farm. Uh, it's gonna be dirty work. I mean, you have to wear boots and uh, just be ready, like, you know, with a mindset that you're gonna get dirty because we're gonna be washing pockets, learning more about compost in more detail and, uh, and the technical aspect. Uh, we'll be doing some gardening because we do test the compost uh, at the farm. Uh, so we do a little bit of everything. You know, it's about bringing our community together.
any any other questions or, or comments? Well, thank you so much for being here and for your time.